Las Vegas Review Journal Radio Row Super Bowl 58 here at Mandalay Bay Convention Center. Jermaine Illuminor sits down with us. How are you doing? Like, are you enjoying this experience? Yeah, this is my first time in my career again to experience this. So it's definitely a blessing to be able to be here with you talking about football and whatever else you want to talk about and just experience Radio Row. Well, let's start there, whatever else, because uh, we were talking off there, but you are a new father. Have Has it settled in yet? Like, have you felt it yet? Like, oh, yeah, I'm a dad, or is it still just like this like, glorious like honeymoon phase that you're in right now? So it settled in when I got to see it for the first time. I didn't know that when the baby comes out, he or she will be purple, <laughs> and there will be a, like, a slight silence in the room until he or she cries. So I'm standing there looking, and I'm like, it's about to happen. And then she starts crying. I'm like, okay, we're good. Did and it feel like it was an hour? It felt like it was a day. <laughs> and so, and it was actually like five seconds. She actually started crying right away. So as soon as I saw her and she opened her eyes and started looking around, I was like, I'm a dad. That's it's the craziest film in the world. And um, I forgot who it was, but someone told me, you know, you can love your wife, you can love your dogs, you can love your family. But as soon as you see your first kid, that love is indescribable. And that's how I feel right now. It's just, a, it's indescribable. And be able to go home to my baby girl every single day and know that she's at home waiting for me is the best one in the world. Is it unconditional love? Because I feel like there were some incidents with the diaper changing and you're probably not <laughs> very happy. I actually am a pro at diaper changing now. I was changing her yesterday and, you know, my daughter has a tendency to be on the table, squirm around a little bit, and she's either taking a number one or a number two <laughs> with no diaper on. And so... I've gotten pretty good at waiting for that to happen. And as soon as that happens, having a diaper under there, wow. having my wipes ready, having my um, Aquaphor uh, rash cream ready. And then as soon as she goes, bang, 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 done. I think if, the, if it was a diaper challenge, I think I'll probably win because I'm pretty good at it now. They probably have those somewhere. That should be at the Pro Bowl games. It should be diaper challenge. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be I, mean, I think that that would be a great way to involve more people in the Pro Bowl. It's better than some of the other stuff they have. I, I didn't even watch it. I was going to say, <laughs> I don't think you did. Well, that, that leads me to, I was going to say, there was, there's was. there been a lot of kind of drama around the offense, I would say, and a lot of, you know, the coaching moves that have happened, the new GM, all that stuff, and everybody's been caught up in it. I feel like you probably weren't. I feel like you, were, you had other things to worry about. I did. My daughter, um, I'm just getting caught up with all the news that's happened now obviously seeing ap get hired and everything else going on but i've somewhat been away from social media for a little bit i'm sure if you follow me you've seen me um interact with some fans for a little bit well so i was involved fun. in some of that oh uh, you're talking about the um if it's the raiders <laughs> locker room or not the locker room i could have sworn it was not the raiders locker room. so here's the it's, here's the problem and i i don't people are saying you're 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 correcting jermaine he knows better than you <laughs> so here's what happened for those who are following, following it there was a you know a Chiefs banner that was up on the door to the locker room, and everybody was freaking out that there was a Raiders locker room. And you said, "I go in that locker room. That's not our locker room. There's two doors. There's a back." Okay, door. we walk out and walk in through one set of doors. Wait, your door. I have never seen the back door, so I googled it before I said anything, and I was like, "Is this the Raiders locker room or the UNLV locker right. room?" And I didn't know that UNLV had a locker room that there was a specific locker room in the stadium. So yeah. I was assuming it was a UNLV locker room and I went with it. And I didn't think that it was gonna blow up and be a discussion as much as it was. And I didn't think that fans were gonna start fighting over me being right or wrong and stuff like so that. So that was the issue. So the issue was I, I did a radio show and I said, no, they're in the Raiders locker room. And you said they said, why are you calling Jermaine Illuminor a liar? I was like, first of all, I, I know Jermaine. I wouldn't call him a liar. I'm just saying. I have very loyal followers, so, you know. Door. And then <laughs> there was another media outlet that went and did a, a video after I said that, and they said the same thing you did. No, this is UNLV's locker room because they haven't seen that door as well. And so then it was like, Jermaine was right all along. It was a whole thing. I think these fans believe what I believe, and that is I'm rarely wrong. <laughs> and so... There's a lot of times where I may have been wrong, but I won't admit I'm wrong, so I'm basically right because I haven't said I'm wrong. Yeah. And my fans and the people who follow me on social media have come to accept the fact that nine times out of ten, I'm right, and that one time I'm wrong, I'm not going to admit I was wrong. <laughs> so technically, I'm still right, and that's why you haven't seen me say anything about the door incident because there you go. I don't need to acknowledge it. You were right. You said that's not the door we use. Exactly. Just, that was true. And it, I, was, yeah, I didn't lie about it. I, that's not the door we use. I didn't see no Raiders legends on the door. I didn't see no black hallways. It was just a random door. And so let's let's say let's just say you were not 100% right. We don't have to say you're wrong. But I wasn't incorrect. Right. 
Exactly. That, that's what we'll go with. But I want to follow that to say, now that you know that they're in your locker room, that has to um, Well, I'm not the biggest fans of the Chiefs. <laughs> We're aware. As I'm sure you can already tell, I don't like their players, don't like their fan base, don't like their stadium. So I'm glad we got to beat them at home of the Chiefs. But the fact, it's kind of like, it's kind of, it, it sucks a little bit that they're in our stadium and the first playoff game getting played is by the Chiefs. But I think that adds fuel to the fire when it comes to the Raiders players as a whole because, you know, they're in your house, they're eating your food, they're sleeping in your bed. Yeah. What are you going to do about it? You know, how are you going to prevent that from happening again? And I don't know the next time the Super Bowl is going to be in Vegas, but I can guarantee you that I'm sure the Raiders will do everything they can to make sure that doesn't happen again, especially with AP at the helm. Yeah. Well, you say you don't like the Chiefs. I'm going to give you a word of advice and say you are a free agent. They might need an offensive lineman. The Chiefs? Don't, don't say you don't like them. The Chiefs? Yeah. I'm not a left tackle, so I'm good. <laughs> okay. All right. And they already, pay, they already paid that right tackle, and I'm a right Ooh. tackle, so it's not looking like I'm going to go to the Chiefs. Plus, I would never go there. <laughs> okay. Well, how, what is this process? Like, how do you approach this? Because as you're saying, like, there's a new coach. You guys were all excited about a new coach. Mm -hmm. That's that's great. He's there. Antonio Pierce is in. The, the program looks like it's going forward very well, but you aren't sure where you know what's going to happen so how are you approaching this like i know you're passionate about the raiders you love the raiders you want to be with the raiders but it's a business and you're not certain what's going to be there and somebody might blow you yeah. i think i learned from last free agency just don't go into free agency with any expectation you know if the raiders want me back then they will do everything to get me back and if they don't there's no hard feelings i understand it's a business i understand that there's multiple positions that need addressing and I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, I'm the best player on the team. I deserve X, Y, and Z. I know that I filled my role well this season. And me personally, I feel like I'm one of the best right tackles in the NFL. Yeah. And I'm hoping that that's a league-wide thing, that they will believe that. So me personally, like I said, I, I want to be here. This is my home. I love Vegas. I love playing for the Raiders. I love having that, out, that emblem on the side of my helmet. I love rocking that logo. And I love everything about the Raiders. But at the end of the day, I have a daughter now. I have a wife. I want to be able to look after them and give them the future that they deserve and be able to give my daughter the future that she deserves to and be able to look after her and the rest of my family for the rest of their life. So I'm hoping that it's here. And if it's not here, I'm always going to be a fan of the Raiders. I'm always going to support this team. And I'm always going to believe black and silver. Silver and black. Sorry, I take that back. Silver and black. There you go. They fired me up on Twitter about that. Silver <laughs> and black. I am so sorry, Raider Nation. Silver and black. Silver and black. I was going to ask if you've had those conversations yet, but I know they just got the GM in place. And yeah, none things. yet. I'm you've sure. been doing other things. so Yeah, I'm sure I'll hear from them in the next couple of weeks. I know things have been hectic in that building, getting the positional coaches set. I know they don't even have an O-line coach yet, so it's hard to know where you want to go on an offensive line when you don't have a coach in place. I know they're going to probably start interviewing some candidates real soon. Um, I know how AP feels about me. AP knows how I feel about him. I love that man to death. I would write, you know, all that should be just ride or die. I'm a ride or die Raider. And if I end up somewhere else, like I said, I'm always going to support this team and this fan base. Did you follow along with the Cliff Kingsbury slash Luke Getzey drama? No. I, I'm trying not to get too involved in things like that. I don't know. I know Cliff from my days at A&M when he was at A&M. Right. Um, so... You know, I know he's a great guy. He's, he's a great mind. He would have been a great coach to play for. But I trust AP's judgment. And AP isn't going to bring someone in who he doesn't believe isn't going to help this team win games. And he's a great character. He's a great um, judgment. Like, he knows how to judge character. And he knows what he's talking about when it comes to football. So I'm excited for them. And if I'm here, I'm excited for us. And if I'm not here, then I'm excited for them and see what they can do. Going back to the, the, the free agency discussion, you, you know, had a great year. Played very well. And a lot of you know, a lot of times that's a perfect time to go into free agency when you had a great season. I know that's not why you were playing well. Like you weren't thinking, I got to make money with this contract. You were thinking, I'm helping the team. Mm -hmm. But how nice is it to know what you put on tape this year, knowing that you're going to be judged on that coming up with whatever you get, whatever offer you get. Yeah, I think the thing about this season is it was a successful season for me, but I know I'm capable of way more, and that's what excites me about thinking about next season is that I'm just scratching the surface of the type of player I want to be and that's why I'm so grateful for AP because when Josh was here I was okay as a player but I wasn't really 
stepping and running towards my potential. Like I was kind of playing under that. And then when AP took over, he kind of he gave me a new mindset just because it was a new leash on life for me. Just having a guy who allows you to be yourself and is going to be himself, and you know you can trust a hundred percent, and you it's right or die. You know he's. He's rattled off for you too. He's not just thinking about himself and he's not just trying to impress the guys in the suits. He's trying to, you know, what comes first is the player and the guy wearing that helmet and that little shoulder pads and who's actually going out there and putting everything on the line for the fans and the fan base and the team. So I'm really happy with the way I was able to play this year. I owe a lot of it to AP. And, you know, like I said, whatever happens, happens. But I came out of this season being proud of the way I played and how I was able to finish the season. You know, everyone deals with injuries and everything. And I was able to finish the game, like finish the season strong and finish the Denver Broncos game strong. And if that's my last game as a Raider, I'm always going to remember that one game because of everything we had to fight through as a team and everything I had to fight through personally to get to that game on Sunday and to be able to, you know, play. Oh. I remember hearing that you said this was like your hardest season mentally. Was that why? Was that yeah, it was. Um, story of it. You know, I, I know a lot of people would love to bring up that week four game against the Chief, um, the Chargers. You know, me going against Kareem Mack, and a lot of things went into that performance. But I take the brunt of it because I should have played better. But there was a lot of things off the field that I was dealing with that I didn't even want to be there that day, um, and I didn't even know if I wanted to play football at that time. And you know, I. I've struggled with depression mentally sometimes. Like, I've struggled with it, you know, in the past. And it was one thing, you know, I talked to Adam about it. It, you know, it crept back up this season. And, you know, you can talk to any offensive lineman here, especially tackles. Being on an island is a high pressure situation because if you have one bad play, that's all everyone's going to talk about. You can have 65 good plays, but if you had 66 plays as a whole and that one play is terrible, that's all they're going to remember. And so, for me, getting to play Mac again and having AP running things again to go out there and do what I did against him, that was huge for me mentally. But, yeah, I mean, it, this season was personally my best because of everything I overcame mentally and how I was able to finish the season and, like, the type of person I became. And, you know, I'm grateful for AP. I'm grateful for Champ. I'm grateful for all the people they put in my life and, you know, Cam Clemens, Carm, um, Colton, Andre. Like, I have such a great support like system with the Raiders. And then outside the Raiders, too, I think what changed everything was getting a mental coach. Um, I was able to talk to Lane Johnson from the Eagles because he was, you know, I mean, it's a known thing. He struggles with depression. And he put me on a mental coach. Um, his name is Brian Kane, and he's actually a pretty popular mental coach. And so he changed everything for me, too, when it came to breathing techniques. Like, there's a couple pictures I posted on Instagram where it's like you see me truly breathing in and out, like, because it's stressful. Football is stressful. Playing right tackle in the NFL is stressful. And especially when you have a rookie Q, like QB who you know is going to lean on you more and, you know, depend on you to really help him get through the game and play at his highest level. You know, sometimes people can crumble under that pressure and having the mental coach and having Brian and then having Lane and having all the guys I had in the building, it was huge for me. And that's why I was so, like I said, I was so happy with this season because I overcame a lot. And I, there was truly at one point I thought I wanted to quit the game and just quit football as a whole. And to get through that and to get out there against the Broncos after playing the way I did and to finish that game and just stand there and be like, you know, I'm, I'm really proud of this season. I left it all out there. There's nothing I have in the tank right now. Like, my tank is fully empty. It was, it was really cool. But then also to know that there's still so much more I can accomplish. Yeah, it, it just gets me excited just talking about it now. What you are very open when you're you know talking and, and dealing with stuff, and and I it's obviously refreshing for an athlete. A lot of guys won't do it. A lot of guys just kind of deal with it. And like I have to fight this through myself. Mm -hmm. What is it about you? I guess expressing it that helps you. I've just learned that the more you talk about it, the more you can accept that it's a real thing. Yeah. And then the more you can go seek help, and. I feel like a lot of guys in the league struggle with depression because, like I said, it's a high-pressure situation. You're on the field, and you have someone behind you gunning for your job. You have to do your job at the highest level because if not, then you'll lose the opportunity you have. And you can only play this game for such a short amount of your life that not everyone gets to, like me, you're going year seven, going on year eight, hopefully looking at free agency is looking good. But it, you have, there's so much that goes into getting ready for that one day. Those first six days, Monday through Saturday, 
it's a it's a fight it's a war you know mentally and physically you have to go out there you have to practice you have to, your body may be beat up you may be hungry you may be tired you may be sore you may be exhausted but you have to get through all that to get to sunday and then sunday you have to be able to keep your emotions in check in order to go out there and compete at the highest level and know that if you don't then someone else is going to do it for you and so with me i've just learned that being open about it is better because like i said the more open you are about it the more you can accept it and the more you can accept it the more you can get help and then once you get the help that you need then you can really be the person who you know you can be and sometimes when it comes to depression and mental illness and things like that it can take away from the person you are and i've seen a lot of guys who are great people but just kind of let the depression eat them up and with me i didn't want to be one of those people i wanted to you know show people that look you may be going to do like depression but i am too and i'm a pro athlete you know i'm supposed to be on top of the world right now making all this money living this fancy lifestyle going on tv you know going to the fancy parties getting special treatment but none of that matters if under all of that you're depressed and you're going through a bunch of mental like um health issues and you don't want to accept that and acknowledge that and be able to get help for that so like i said for me it's more so the more open I am, and that's just who I am as a person, I'm just an open book. The more open I am, the more it helps me feel better because I know I'm not the only person going through that. Does that does that play into social media? Because I've seen people say, why are you, if you're dealing with anything with mental issues, why would you open yourself up to the crazy, like weirdos, morons, haters, whatever on social media, and you do open yourself up to it, I guess, is that part of it? Because behind all that craziness there's a lot of people that actually care about you on social media and a lot of people that are for you not against you and so with me i also want to show that there may be some kid going out like out there who's going through depression doesn't know what to do and if i can just save him by being open about my depression and what i'm going through then that's more than enough for me i just want to be able to show fans and show the world that look everyone's going to go through something in their life but you can overcome it and still be who you know you are and accomplish whatever you want to accomplish in life like don't let this little mental illness change you and um you know ruin you as a person and with social media i'm able to open up and engage with fans who i won't see on a daily basis but they'll follow me to just learn more about me and learn more about my story and you know maybe they look for my social media for entertainment or happiness and you know maybe there's that one person who's like what's your man gonna say today <laughs> is he gonna say something cool or what's he gonna post today and that may not be that but there may be that and if i can be that for that one person then that's that's a really cool thing what um how do you want to be remembered when your career is over shoot as a pro bowl and all pro one of the best in my position yeah you how how close do you, do you think you are to that level? I know you were you were kind of open. A lot of guys come out and say, "I'm the best. I'm the best." Mm-hmm. And there was times this year where you said, "You know, I'm very good. I'm close. I'm not at the. I'm not mm-hmm. the best guy in the league right now." Like mm-hmm. you were pretty open about where you were. Mm-hmm. You're like, you know, very good season yeah. right up just outside of that. So how close do you think you are to being the best? I think I'm scratching the surface, and um, that's why I'm really excited for next season. Because I know what I'm capable of now, and I have everything in place off the field in order to succeed on the field. And so I'm really excited to get out there every Sunday, Monday, Thursday, Saturday, whenever that is, and just finish, like pick up from where I left off this past season. And I'm really excited for that. I'll be healthy. Mentally, I'll be healthy. You know, if I'm not here and I'm somewhere else, hopefully I'm in a place that, you know, has a winning culture. If I'm not, then hopefully I can build up that winning culture for them. But I'm where I need to be right now mentally in order to take that next step into that um, small group of guys that can call themselves a pro bowl or all-pro. Because not a lot of people can do that. It's only two people who get to be all-pro to right tackle and a number of people who get to do it in the pro bowl. But it's the all-pro that people really strive for. And then the pro bowls will come. So if you... I know there's fans out there who are going to hear this like, oh, Jermaine, no way. But if you truly sit down and watch my film, and watch Panay's film, or watch Lane's film, or watch Braden Smith's film, or Morgan Moses, or Rob Havistein, because these are the guys that got all pro votes. Go watch their film and go watch my film against the same teams, and tell me that I'm not doing what they're doing, if not more. Panay is a great freaking player. He's all world, and he deserved that. Lane, all world, he's a Hall of Famer. But after that, there's no way I'm not as good as the Bradens and the Rob Haverstein's and stuff like that. I know I am, and my film proves it. 
Jump in. Just jump oh. in. Just jump, just jump in. You're good. Ball head, small head. Yeah. This guy. Well, Old teammates reunited. They not on. They not on. Well, I they not on. Cool. I get it, bro. That's, that's you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I get look at it, this bro. Guy. Look at this I guy. Matt. <laughs> oh, look, look at this. The whole reunion of Vegas guys. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> Jermaine, you can uh, sit and talk to Mac if you want, but we we appreciate you. Is this beef jerky? If you bro, look at this, you made beef jerky. Like, you too, bro. Let's see, bro. It's a GE uh, profile smart indoor smoke. He actually put me on some real good honey I have in my I'm, house right now. I'm telling you, and, and a jerky gonna hit too. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. It's three hundred dollars off at Best Buy. Uh, it's six hundred dollars for this. I don't want it for the, for the whole smoke. Put a whole chicken in there. You can put a whole. Let's, let's Come on, man. Yes. Yeah. For six hundred, man. Cool. Come on. Would I lie to you? And you put the honey on that? Have I ever steered you wrong? I know there's some soy sauce in there too. Alright. That's some good shit too. <laughs> Come on. I just recently bought some like um four year age Japanese um soy sauce from Japan yesterday. Um, Same, ma'am. You put that in there with that? It's a little top round, a little top round. Huh? You're a new one Japanese? I don't know Japanese. I just I uh, you do, I just buy Japanese food. Okay, that's what I'm saying. You could, uh, you get here? <laughs> I don't know where it was, but. So it's just this G profile smart indoor smoker. Literally put it on my counter. Did you just cut the meat up? Cut up some top. And you, you dried it out? Put it in there. Yeah, half a cow. Half a cow? Why no cash? I wasn't sure. Yeah, so got half a cow, cut up the top round, put it in there, leave it in there for five hours, come back. So, and then, you have spicy too? Uh, oh man, you think, <laughs> have I ever have I ever seen you wrong when it comes to food? No. Are are you wearing shoes? That was the other question. Would I would I ever come in here and disrespect myself? <laughs> All right, good. Shoes on. Good, good. I ain't gonna lie, this beef jerky. Uh, man, that's a full endorsement right there. So are you? Wait, are you selling this? You just make. I'm I'm doing it all. I'm right. not selling the jerky. Oh, I, I, I think you're going to sell mass producer here. I might need to. No, you get to. Because it's hidden. Because <laughs> Jack Link's oh. going to be $500 for some subpar jerky. And I'm Bro, good I don't lie about my jerky. That's my wife. I got to shit house right now. Oh, sorry, my language. Sorry. No, you're good. You're good. This is a good jerky, bro. And now you can make you make your own. Send me the recipe. I'm t huh? Where you find it? To me, where I'm trying to make it. No, would you like? How'd you like? How'd you make it? Like sauce-wise. Oh, little soy sauce. Or well, you go tomorrow. You know, some people don't want soy sauce. Teriyaki. Yep. A little pepper, salt. Yep. Um, throw some garlic in there. Let it marinate. Yep. I do it overnight. Gotta. I see, have, I see the air chili flakes too. Yeah. A little spice. Uh huh. Um, but you gotta let it marinate overnight. Yeah, come on. Come on. Oh, yeah, because they over there. Yeah, he over there. All right. I'm about to kill it. I mean, oh, yeah, y'all ain't even get into it. Get into it. All right. Tell you. Tell now, that's some. Oh. Um, let me get a big piece. Okay. How long are you cooking for? About like four or five hours. But this is the thing. So the machine, you cook it. Oh, it's a machine. Oh. Yeah. Well, let me, he'll, he'll talk about it right now. Let's, yeah, let's okay. do it. Let's start. You can hear him. Back. Mac Hollins joins us. Yeah. Former Raider with our, you know, our good friend Jermaine Illuminor, your former teammate. Yeah. Catching up over here. And you're catching up over jerky. How did you make this jerky? All right. So I'll, I'll give you the whole spiel. So a GE Profile Smart Indoor Smoker. So it's basically the exact same oh, thing. Indoor smoker? Indoor smoker. So it's the exact same thing as your outdoor smoker. Goes on your countertop, though. And you're like, okay, there's no space. You can fit a 14-pound roast on here. You can put three racks of ribs in here. You can put 40 wings in here. So there's plenty of space inside. Dishwasher friendly. But so for this jerky, I made, I made, got some top round, sliced it into like quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch thick, marinate it overnight, get it good flavor, mm -hmm. put it on there, start it. Now everything, I can do it on my app or I can do it right there. Huh? I can leave for four or five hours, let it cook. There's temperature probe comes with it. So you put it in the meat so you know what temperature it is. Then you can set it based off the probe, time, or temperature inside. And then once it hits that temperature, if you're not at the house, It'll keep it warm at whatever temperature you want for 24 hours. Wow. I'm surprised. I mean, it, it's obviously great, and you did a great job with it. I feel like you, I'm surprised that you have have a machine because I'm sure it's good because I feel like you're just a guy that cooks over for an open, open yeah. fire. Yeah. Like, you just start oh, a fire yeah. and start holding meat over it. That's how you usually cook, I feel. Yeah, like. my problem is HOA. Like, I didn't realize HOAs were so, like, <laughs> you can't do anything. 
I can't man. cook anything in the back. I can't just smoke a pig oh, over man, top of the it's, it's terrible, bro. All right. Throw away the whole HOA. Okay. That's a good... I think everybody's going to be behind that message. Yeah. It'll be good. But now, when it's cold, or you're, it's too hot, and you don't smell like smoke, and there's literally no smoke. Yes. Wow. Open up zero smoke. Well, I mean... It's great. It's great to see you back in town. How much have you missed the Vegas, the Raiders, everything out here? I miss it a lot. Yeah, Jermaine. I'm, mo mainly it's been Jermaine that I've been missing, but no, it's been uh, it's been great to be back, be back in a familiar city, and it feels good to kind of be back and feel that. It, it kind of hit me when I got off the plane. What did uh, what? How was the season for you guys? I mean, you guys were in it. I think you were. You know, had some more wins than some people expected. Yeah. Uh, how did you uh, kind of assess this season? Yeah, I think it's this point we don't make the playoffs. Or obviously, your goal is the Super Bowl always, and we didn't we didn't even make the playoffs, which was unfortunate. Uh, fortunate that we got to play another year, you know. But uh, you know, my goal is always the Super Bowl, so yeah. missed missed opportunity there. But it's right back to work. It's right back into it. We we're just talking to Jermaine about uh, you know pending free agency yeah. potentially. Uh, you were kind of in the same situation, yep. I believe. Yeah. Uh, I saw the Steelers fans are kind of cir you know, circulating. Yeah. There's a connection there now. Yeah. Uh, what I guess what. Do you want to be back in Atlanta, first of all, or what is what is your plan for this offseason? Yeah, I mean, I, I I would love to be in Atlanta. I'd love to be here. I'd love to be in Miami. I'd love to be in Pittsburgh. I'd love to be on a team. Um, but I, it's always about weighing options. I, I think, you know, I've been in free agency four times, three times, and it's never like, hey, I, I want to be here, and that's it, because then you, you, you can blind yourself. If, if I would have been like that, I would have never came to Vegas and, you know, had the best year of my career. If I would have said, hey, I'm staying in Miami no matter what. Um, so I, I, my options are always open, and it's always about the best fit. I feel like there, there's a lot of people that say I'm not sweating it, and you're, you're like, yeah, you are. I feel yeah. like you don't sweat much. Nah, it's, like, <laughs> it's, it's not like gonna make a difference. Wherever life goes, yeah, that's where you go. I, wherever I go, I'm gonna I'm gonna train hard. I'm gonna work hard, and I'm gonna push the guys around me to be the best that they can be, um, no matter where it is. What I, I know we talked about the shoes, the uh, lack of shoes, which is fantastic. It's one of the favorite subjects everybody has about you. Do, uh, do I, is anybody ever like in public that doesn't know who you are? Like what on earth is happening here? Oh, all the time. It's like <laughs> so. It's the it's the I'll catch their eye and their eye pops up from my feet and they try to act like they weren't looking. Uh, but it's just like they see the wild hair, they see the feet on the ground. They're like, "Where's Jane and how'd she get Tarzan to come to the city?" Mm -hmm. uh, but by, by the way, your 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 smoker is working out well. Jermaine will not. Jane, yeah, I'm telling you, three hundred dollars off at Best Buy. Go ahead, Jermaine, until Sunday. Go ahead, get one. I knew you'd text me. I'm going to text you. <laughs> I'm telling you. Like, but you, like this bag was full. You, you do the top round, you get the whole bag. You know what I'm saying? You make, you make that. All eat. You got it for the whole week. You made some rice. I'm going to go. Yeah, I'm going to get you right. But I also feel like at this point, you you have to make the jerky and market it. Like, you've got to be selling this. No, thing. you got to. Listen, listen, listen. Some mac jerky, and this is this grass fed, grass finished beef. We don't we don't do none of the grain. Fed Look, stuff. you do mac jerky. You get your face, no, your hair, the hair, do like the hair of the face. You put like two feet on the back. Made by a barefoot man. Good to go. You're not Dude. getting no. You're not getting no royalties. So don't try to put too many ideas. Right. Out I'm just trying to put my friend on. You know, for those that have maybe heard interviews with Mac and seen him, like <laughs> I'm sure they're like he's playing a character. He's doing, you know, he's being goofy. No, nope, you are him. not. No, he's uh, not. used to see you walking home from the facility quite often, and you actually, I can't remember exactly what it was. You said you told us, if I have a shirt that I can, I'll walk. But if I don't. Then you can pick me up and give me a ride. There was some yeah. weird. If I don't, what are the rules? If I don't have a shirt on, that means I'm just cruising. Like I'm in okay. my zone. Yeah, you, you, you don't need to pick me up. If I got a shirt on, then like okay, I might be in art. Like if you offer, I might I might take it. <laughs> but if I got the shirt off, like you good. Yeah, there was multiple times I saw him walking. Yeah. And there was one time I was like, hey, man, you need a ride now. I'm chilling. Huh? Yeah. Sure, right. Is like, do you always kind of live close to the facility? Is that your plan? Where whatever team you're on? Yeah, always within like five minutes. If I if I yeah. can, like no more than ten. That's great. Yeah, uh, uh, closer the better. So uh, being back in Vegas this week, seeing the Super Bowl round, just what's the week been like for you? And uh, just enjoying this. I know you've been in Radio Row before. I've yeah. seen it there before. But what is this like? Um, it's cool. It's always it's great to you know be able to run into uh, teammates and former coaches or whatever it is, but see familiar faces. Obviously, you want to be in the game, but a good second place is here to. And then to be in Vegas and be in familiar stomping grounds is also great. Awesome. So one more time, tell people uh, where they, what they should pick up. Yeah, uh, pick up this. It's a big hit here. It, I'm telling you, this GE Profile Smart Indoor Smoker from uh, Best Buy is $300 off till Sunday right now. So you can you can jump on it like Jermaine's about to. I was going to let you go, but one more question. Yep. A's, is that A's. a message to Vegas? I, I didn't pull it out for no reason. There I didn't pull it out for no reason. Are you an A's fan or you just said, I, you know what? I'm not an A's fan, so I definitely didn't pull it out for no reason. What message are you trying to send? They got space over here. You want to play? I ain't going to play for days, but... <laughs>
<laughs> they got space over here for days. Okay. Good enough. Thanks, man. <laughs> we appreciate you, Jermaine. Mac, awesome stuff. We appreciate it. Appreciate it, y'all. Thanks, man.